Hey everyone, I'm Mr. Willis, and you will love economics. Let's review the characteristics that distinguish perfectly competitive industries from other market structures. In a perfectly competitive industry, many small firms produce and sell an identical product. Perfectly competitive firms are price takers, which means that every firm in the industry must sell their output at the same price, which is set by supply and demand in the market. Because perfect competitors sell identical products with absolutely no product differentiation, there's no need to use non-price competition in the industry. The intense competition in the market will motivate firms to waste as few resources as possible and produce at productive efficiency in the long run. Perfectly competitive industries also have low barriers to entry, which means that new firms can easily enter the market, while competing firms who are taking economic losses can easily leave. Now that we've covered these facts, let's move on and take a look at graphing a perfectly competitive firm. Let's begin by graphing the per unit production cost curves for the firm. Here we can see the average variable cost, the average total cost, and the marginal cost for the firm at various levels of output. Because perfectly competitive firms are relatively small in size, they generally face similar costs. While there might be some slight variation in the rate in which they rise or fall, the per unit production costs of every firm are very similar. This means that the per unit cost curves for one firm look relatively the same as the per unit cost curves for any other firm in the industry. Next, let's graph the demand curve for the firm. Suppose that this graph represents a firm in the perfectly competitive market for good A. Remember that perfectly competitive firms are price takers, meaning they must sell their products at a price established by supply and demand in the industry. Suppose that supply and demand in the market sets the price for good A at $3 per unit. With thousands of competitive firms selling their goods at the exact same price, this firm has no incentive to deviate from the price set by the market. As a result, consumers can buy as many units of good A as they want or need from this firm at the market price of $3 per unit. This means that consumer demand for good A is perfectly elastic, and the demand curve for this firm will be horizontal, representing a constant price at every quantity demanded. A perfectly competitive firm's marginal revenue curve is the same as its demand curve. Perfectly competitive firms can sell all of their output at the price established in the market, meaning that the revenue gained from each unit sold will equal the market price. Assume that this is the revenue data for the perfectly competitive firm in the industry for good A. Notice that the marginal revenue gained from each unit sold equals the market price of $3. When plotting the marginal revenue earned by the firm when each additional unit is sold, it will be identical to the price per unit at each quantity demanded. As a result, the firm's marginal revenue curve and demand curve will be identical, representing that demand equals marginal revenue equals price for the perfectly competitive firm. Like all other firms, perfectly competitive firms will produce a profit-maximizing level of output using the optimal output rule. According to this rule, a firm will maximize its profit by producing a quantity of output where the marginal revenue of the last unit produced is equal to its marginal cost. On the graph, this optimal level of output can be found where the marginal revenue curve intercepts the marginal cost curve. This is known as the profit maximization point. From here, we can use the graph to determine revenue, costs, profits, and losses for the perfectly competitive firm. There are a few simple steps to follow. First, we must identify the profit maximization point and the quantity of output that will be produced by the firm. We must also identify the market price at which the firm will sell its output. The next step is to use the output line to determine the firm's per unit costs. The variable cost per unit can be identified where the quantity line intercepts the AVC curve, 
and the total cost per unit can be identified where the quantity line intercepts the ATC curve. From here, we can determine whether the firm is earning economic profits, taking economic losses, or breaking even. Here are the rules. If the firm produces a quantity where the market price is above the ATC curve, then the firm is earning economic profits. If the firm produces a quantity where the market price is below the ATC curve, then the firm is taking economic losses. If the firm produces a quantity where the market price is equal to the ATC curve, then the firm is breaking even. Using the graph, we can also calculate the revenue, costs, profits, and losses for this perfectly competitive firm. Let's assume that the firm will produce 100 units of good A, and the market price for good A is $3. The firm will earn $3 of revenue per unit of good A, and will earn a total revenue of $300, represented by the area shaded here. If the firm faces an average variable cost of $1 per unit, the firm will face a total variable cost of $100, represented by the area shaded here. And if the firm faces an average total cost of $2 per unit, the firm will face a total cost of $200 represented by the area shaded here. With $300 in total revenue, the firm will be able to pay the $200 in total production costs and still have a net revenue of $100. This net revenue represents $100 in economic profits for the firm. Changes in market price can cause changes in output, revenue, and profits for a perfectly competitive firm. For example, Suppose that demand for good A increases, driving up the market price for good A to $4. Because it's a price taker, the firm will sell its output at the new market price, which increases the marginal revenue earned by each additional unit sold to $4. This will be visualized with an upward shift of the demand and marginal revenue curve. With a greater marginal revenue per unit, the firm will seek a new profit maximization point and increase the quantity of good A it produces until marginal revenue equals marginal cost. Now that product price has risen to $4, and the firm has boosted its output to 150 units, the firm will increase its total revenue from $300 to $600, leading to greater economic profits for the firm. Likewise, if demand for good A decreases, the market price for good A will decrease to $2. Again, as a price taker, the firm will sell its output at the new market price, which decreases the marginal revenue earned by each additional unit sold to $2. This will be visualized with a downward shift of the demand and marginal revenue curve. With a lesser marginal revenue per unit, the firm will seek a new profit maximization point and decrease the quantity of good A it produces until marginal revenue equals marginal cost. Now that product price has fallen to $2, and the firm has reduced its output to 50 units. The firm will decrease its total revenue from $300 to $100, leading the firm's economic profits to turn into economic losses. Changes in production costs can also cause changes in output, revenue, and profits for a perfectly competitive firm. For example, suppose that the price of electricity, a variable cost of production, decreases for the firm. As the average variable cost decreases at every output level, the average total cost and marginal cost of producing each unit of good A falls as well. This will be visualized with a downward shift of the AVC, ATC, and MC curves. However, even as price level and marginal revenue remain unchanged, the firm will have an incentive to boost production at a new profit maximization point because a decreasing marginal cost per unit means the firm can produce more than it used to and still keep marginal revenue greater or equal to marginal cost. As a result, the quantity of output produced by the firm will increase, and the firm will earn greater total revenue and greater economic profits. On the other hand, suppose there is an increase in the price of electricity. As the average variable cost increases at every output level, the average total cost and marginal cost of producing each unit of good A rises as well. This will be visualized with an upward shift of the AVC, ATC, and MC curves. 
Even as price level and marginal revenue remain unchanged, the firm will have an incentive to reduce production at a new profit maximization point because an increasing marginal cost per unit means the firm must produce less than it used to in order to keep marginal revenue greater or equal to marginal cost. As a result, the quantity of output produced by the firm will decrease and the firm will earn less total revenue and fewer economic profits or may even start taking economic losses. Changes in fixed costs have a slightly different impact on perfectly competitive firms. Remember that fixed costs include overhead costs like rent, insurance, and licensing fees. Because these costs must be paid regardless of output level, they have no influence on the quantity that the firm produces. In addition, changes in fixed costs do not impact the variable cost nor the marginal cost of each unit of output. Instead, it will only change the total production cost per unit. For example, suppose that rent, a fixed cost of production, decreases for the firm. The average total cost decreases at every output level, which will be visualized with a downward shift of the ATC curve. However, because fixed costs have no influence on average variable cost or marginal cost, the AVC and MC curves will not shift and the firm's profit maximization point will remain the same. As a result, the quantity of output produced by the firm will not change and the firm's total revenue will stay the same. But the firm will earn greater economic profits because total costs have fallen. On the other hand, suppose that rent increases for the firm. The average total cost increases at every output level, which will be visualized with an upward shift of the ATC curve. Again, because fixed costs have no influence on average variable cost or marginal cost, the AVC and MC curves will not shift and the firm's profit maximization point will remain the same. As a result, the quantity of output produced by the firm will not change and the firm's total revenue will stay the same, but the firm will earn fewer economic profits or may even start taking economic losses because total costs have risen. And that's graphing perfect competitors. Be sure to subscribe to the channel by hitting the red button below so you can receive alerts about new videos when they become available. If you enjoy my channel or find my videos useful, let me know by liking the video and feel free to leave a comment below. We have full video lectures on every topic in macro and microeconomics, as well as quick macro and micro minute videos for cram sessions and quick reviews. If you'd like to learn more, you can click here for my video on perfectly competitive firms, or you can click here for my video on perfectly competitive firms in the long run. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time on You Will Love Economics.